Karen E. Wetterhan was a Dartmouth College chemistry professor and the founder of the Dartmouth Toxic Metals Superfund Research Program. Professor Wetterhan, an expert in the mechanisms of metal toxicity, was best known for her work on chromium and mercury, but today she is known for the tragic events of her death, which changed safety procedures and will forever serve as a chilling reminder of the dangers in making minor errors in scientific experiments. Wetterham was born in the city of Plattsburgh, New York, on October the 16th, 1948. From a young age, Karen was obsessed with science and she knew it was what she wanted to pursue as a career. She graduated from St. Lawrence University with a bachelor's degree in 1970 and moved on to Columbia University where she received her doctorate in 1975. Here, she also won the Hammett Award in Chemistry. After spending a year as a trainee in cancer research, she landed the role of a professor of chemistry at Dartmouth College, where she would work until her death. Wetterhan mentored students as Dartmouth's first female chemistry professor and co-founder of the college's Woman in Science project, which encourages female undergraduates to pursue science majors. Wetterhan made a name for herself outside of Dartmouth as well, particularly for her research into how cells metabolise chromium and how it can cause cancer. She went on to write 85 research papers that are still studied vigorously today. Professor Wetterham was a dedicated teacher and mentor at Dartmouth College. According to students and colleagues, she was genuinely a nice person who everyone liked and enjoyed working with. A fantastic teacher, a gifted administrator and a world-renowned researcher. Outside of work, Karen had a family with her husband Leon and their two children, her son Ashley and daughter Charlotte. On the 14th of August 1996, Wetterhan had been preparing mercury samples whilst investigating the toxic properties of a highly toxic metal known as cadmium, when accidentally spilled two drops of liquid dimethyl mercury onto her hand. Karen was unconcerned about the situation. She had, after all, followed all the dimethyl mercury safety precautions. She was dressed in a lab coat, goggles, and had latex gloves on that were disposable. Even though the professor immediately followed protocol, washing her hands and cleaning her tools, the damage had already been done. She just didn't know it yet. Unknown to the professor, the toxin was absorbed into her system after passing through the glove in mere seconds. Over the next month, she began to feel nauseous, vomiting continuously. A few months after the incident, Wetterham began to feel a tingling sensation throughout her body. Even more concerning, she began to fall whilst walking, losing her footing. Her speech was slurred, and her vision and hearing were becoming worse. In January 1997, she checked herself into hospital. She was diagnosed with severe mercury poisoning. Only then did she recall the spilled droplets. Wetterham was an expert in toxic metals. She knew better than anyone that dimethylmercury, once absorbed into the skin, would end up in her brain. Her condition rapidly deteriorated, despite the aggressive chelation therapy. One of her former students said that her husband saw tears rolling down her face. I asked if she was in pain. The doctor said it didn't appear that her brain could even register pain. While Wetterham fought for her life, her Dartmouth colleagues, along with scientists all over the world, read scientific papers about mercury in the hopes of finding a way to help her. To make sure no one else had been exposed, they tested her hair, clothing, car, students, family, and the hospital room. Sadly, there was no way to help her, and in February 1997, she slipped into a coma which she would never awake from. She then died on June 8, 1997. One of Wetterhan's last wishes, according to Dr. David Nirenberg, a member of the toxicology team that treated her, was for scientists and physicians to investigate dimethylmercury so we could understand it better. This is exactly what happened. Her death changed the precautions that scientists around the world took when working with toxic substances. Just weeks after she died, Chemical and Engineering News published a letter about Wetterhan's fatal accident and the alarming results 
of a dimethylmercury test on the type of gloves that she had worn. The letter also stated that aside from wearing a face shield, anyone working with dimethylmercury should wear silver shield laminate gloves underneath abrasion resistant outer gloves. Anyone who worked with dimethylmercury on a regular basis was required to have blood tests and urine tests performed regularly. Wetterhand's death, although tragic, has resulted in the long-term significant improvement in laboratory safety. She still today is being remembered for the countless years she dedicated to scientific research. Dartmouth has established several memorials in her honour, and her portrait now hangs in the library. As well as this, the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences created an award in her honour that many Dartmouth students have gone on to win. One of her co-workers told the Dartmouth alumni magazine, the accident was a wake-up call. We're now extremely aware of everything that we're doing. According to the Los Angeles Times, a funeral took place on a hot summer's day where Leon sat in the front pew, looking out of place in his dark funeral suit, tears streaming down his face. He picked up a picture of Karen working in her lab and said, it all seemed like a dream, no, like a nightmare, but she loved her work, it made her happy. People always say there's always a silver lining, but I don't see it. Maybe they know more now about Mercury than they did before, but that's too high of a price to pay, if you ask me. People at her funeral talked about the irony about how the dangers of heavy metal snatched her interest in life and then took it. But her death was also seen as noble in the scientific community. Chairman of Dartmouth's chemistry department, John Wynne, said, Somebody had to eat the first hemlock. You learn by doing, by doing new things. And sometimes, what you learn has a tragic consequence, and you want to take responsibility that it never occurs again.